What is up everybody and welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, I'm Dustin. And I'm V. And yeah, welcome to that adventure life. Uh, today we are at the Eagle Rock hike. It's a beautiful hike and it should be amazing with the uh, spring flower bloom. So actually there's two different Eagle Rocks. Uh, one of them is in LA and this one is the PCT in Warner Spring. So don't get confused. Um, yeah, don't get it twisted, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And this one is 6.2 miles and about 836 feet. So it's not that bad. It's considered like easy to moderate. I think it's moderate just because of the length. Yeah. And today we, oh, you know what I was going to say? And we are not alone today. We have Damn. Jennifer, AKA Jevu, and her stud muffin, Danny. Did I point it the right direction? I think so. It's hard to tell. <laughs> but. But yeah. Uh, so we're gonna start heading out. We're excited about the flowers and the the eagle rock, the rocks that look like an eagle. Yeah. yeah. Hope, hopefully, hopefully the temperatures stay low. Supposedly there might be temperatures of right around 80 degrees today. So could be a little bit warm. Uh, if you're gonna be doing this trail, you're going to be looking for the fire station over here. And the uh, trailhead is directly next to it at this gate right here. Just be sure that you close it because there is a uh, livestock and we're trying to keep them in there. Yeah, so make sure you close the gate and uh, it's ca it can be a little tricky since we, uh, we struggle to close the gate. Uh, not that bad. We'll film it again yeah. so you can see that the struggle is real, but yeah, let's get going. There are two different parking options if you're gonna be doing this trail. You can park across the street from the fire station, or you can park at the community resource center, which is just a little bit further down the street. Since we were visiting on the weekend, the shoulder parking was all taken up and we had to go with the second option. Be sure to be careful when crossing the road, cars come through here very fast. If the fire station is not enough of a landmark for you, there is also this rock here in that is right at the trailhead. One thing to watch out for when crossing through this gate and every other gate along this trail is that bar at the bottom. I can't tell you how many times we've tripped over it. After struggling and finally succeeding to lock the gate, it was time to begin the hike. Shortly after setting foot on the trail, you're going to come to a little bit of an obstacle. If you come during the dry summer months, it might not be a problem, but there was flowing water when we visited. Unfortunately, over the years, erosion has really taken its toll on this spot and the gap has gotten bigger and bigger. What once was a small trench has now become a sizable gap that you need to jump over. Luckily, we all managed to get across without getting our feet wet. The trail will now dive into a beautiful forest section that will have you wondering if you are still in California. As we mentioned before, this is a section of the Pacific Coast Trail, or PCT as some may call it. So you may see hikers coming through with large packs on. If you can do us a huge favor and give them the right away, that would be awesome. If these hikers are doing the top down version of the PCT, you'll be seeing them out here right around 2,500 miles into their hike. So I'm sure they would definitely appreciate you giving them the right away. At the two tenths of a mile mark, you will come to yet another gate, and that means another tripping hazard, so watch your step. Shortly after the second gate, you'll come to the third gate, and then you'll be off to the first exposed section of the trail. Luckily, it's short and you'll be back in the shade soon, but just know that the second half of the trail is completely exposed to the sun. This is extremely important to know if you're visiting during the warmer seasons and please be sure to bring plenty of water. 
This section of the trail is incredibly peaceful. There's this beautiful little babbling brook with little tiny waterfalls. And if you visit during the spring, there should be a good amount of wildflowers. We were pretty surprised though, because there weren't as many flowers as there were on our first visit. And it had been a particularly rainy year, so I guess it's just a roll of the dice. One other little bit of advice is that if you can, visit this hike on a cloudy day. On this particular day, the clouds kept moving in and out, and when they were blocking the sun, it gave the forest a beautiful soft light. But then the sun would come out from the clouds and give everything really spotty shadows. If you're planning on taking a break and leaning up against a tree, be sure to check it first. We saw a ton of red ants out there. We are now closing in on the 1.7 mile mark and things are about to heat up. We are quickly running out of shade options on our way out to Eagle Rock. The temperatures were rising and it was almost 80 degrees. You can definitely tell that V is having second thoughts about stepping out into the sun. It's almost like mother nature flipped a switch and changed the environment here. There is still a lot of greenery, but the valley is full of twisted dead trees. You are able to bring your four-legged friend out on this trail, but please be sure to bring more water than they'll need and clean up after them. And just like that, the shade was gone. Unless, of course, you're smart enough to bring your own. Turns out that someone had the positive insight to bring an umbrella. I'm a little bit jealous right now. It seemed like in the blink of an eye, we went from the forest to the desert, but these high temperatures didn't seem to bother these cows that we found in an open meadow. After a short climb, you'll come to one of the only parts of the trail that might be the tiniest bit confusing. You will be arriving at this four-way junction, but the good thing is that it is fairly well marked and you just need to look for a post that says PCT Trail on it. This section of the trail is also way less forgiving and you have to keep your eyes peeled for cacti that are lining the trail. You will be getting a little bit of a downhill break here and enjoy it because you do have a little bit more climbing left to do on the way up to Eagle Rock. And even though we haven't seen them, evidently keep your eyes peeled for horses because they have the right of way on trails. This is another spot that was packed full of purple flowers on our last visit, but sadly it was a little bit barren this time. It's too bad because we were looking forward to sharing it with Danny and Jevu. But at least there were a couple of poppies out there. Unfortunately, we had an incident and we had to retire the umbrella. Uh, there was a small breeze and it went inside out, so we might have to forego the shade at this point for a second. <laughs> When you reach this climb, you will be only one mile away from Eagle Rock. This climb isn't challenging at all, but the rising temperatures did make it just a little bit uncomfortable. The good thing about this last little push to your destination is that you should start to get some glimpses of it, and that will help give you a little bit of motivation to get there. The only challenge is that it might take a little bit of time to identify it on your first visit because it isn't pointed towards you. It definitely doesn't look like an eagle from the side, but the good thing is you'll get one more quick downhill break before the last climb up to Eagle Rock. Being such a popular trail, if you are confused about which way to go, just look for people and you'll find it. Final stretch up to the eagle. A little steep, but you can almost see it. That's all right. There. You do have one last option as you sneak up behind the eagle. The trail comes to a fork and both options will take you up to Eagle Rock, but the left one will get you there much faster. And if you really want to get there fast, you can try and run up that last hill like Danny did. We did see the back of a snake on our way up the hill. Luckily, it wasn't a rattlesnake, but it's always good to keep your eyes peeled for them anyways. As we rounded one final corner, we once again got to lay our eyes upon the mighty eagle. And it's quite easy to see how this rock got its name. And here it is, Eagle Rock. It's funny because you can't really tell from any other angle rather than 
when you get up to the front and then you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, because we came in from way out there and you come in kind of at a side profile of it. Look at, they survived too. That's good. It, it, <laughs> it's a little short, it's a short climb toward the end, but it wasn't that bad at all. It got a little steep. It was great, but don't do what I did by uh, running up the last city. Who wants to show off? He said not to run up the last hill. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to do a little Rocky Balboa and he ended up paying for it pretty good. <laughs> if you would like to have your picture taken on the shoulders of the mighty eagle, there are two ways to go about it. You can either climb up it from the front like V's doing right here, or you can take a short side trail that's located to the left of the eagle. This will have you climbing up the back of the eagle and it is a much less technical route. One good thing about climbing up the eagle is it's made out of a really gritty granite, so traction is not going to be a problem. After a couple of obligatory photos, because if you didn't take a picture with the eagle, did you really go to the eagle, it was time to start on our way back. We had a long ways to go and the hottest part of the day was quickly approaching. You may remember that fork on the way up to the Eagle that I talked about just a second ago. If you take the trail on the right, this is where it would go. After a short distance, it dropped us right back onto the main trail. The good thing about the way back is that with the exception of a couple of very small hills, it's downhill all the way back to the car. The only challenge that you'll be facing on the way back is that some of these downhills can get just a little bit slippery. So be sure to wear shoes with good traction and just watch your step. Eventually you'll be coming right back to that four-way junction again. Luckily this side has one of those PCT posts as well, so just keep an eye peeled for that. If this hike has ignited your passion for unique and bizarre rock formations, you should definitely check out our video about potato chip rock. You can see that one by clicking in the upper corner right now. And another cool thing that you can do after finishing the Eagle Rock hike is head over to Anza Borrego. If you have the right vehicle, you can take in a beautiful sunset at Fonts Point. If you haven't seen that video, you can see it by clicking in the upper corner right now. Fonts Point is about an hour drive from the Eagle Rock Trailhead, but let me tell you, it is so worth it. I can't begin to tell you how happy we were when we started crossing through the gates and dove back into the shade of the forest. I would definitely say that this hike deserves a spot on the must-do list. The hike itself is just challenging enough to be considered a nice little workout, and the scenery and, of course, the Eagle Rock make for one awesome little adventure. All right, well, that is going to do it for the hike to Eagle Rock. We ended up doing it in, what, about three hours and uh, what? Three hours and 20 minutes. Uh, we were, we stay a little bit there. You, you know, some people take longer, some people take shorter. On all trail, I'd say 6.2 miles, but we're actually clocked in at 6.78 miles. I don't know if you can see my phone. Um, that was from the park a lot to the end of the trail head. Yeah, so that was good. I'm glad we're getting out now because the heat is definitely just about to get started. But I think they, I think that's a lot. They're alive. So we'll see you on our next adventure. All right. Follow, like, and subscribe. There he is. I love it. <laughs> Halliburton for food after. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah.